Hey everyone, welcome back to Syria Fantasy Tips. Um, I'm just going to start right off by saying thank you for the feedback on the first video within like the first 24 hours. I had several people uh, subscribe to the channel and like the video and that really helps and it encourages me to uh, make more videos. Which is why I was going to do once a week, but I think I'm going to do it twice a week now. And um, for those that commented and reached out, I know I site that's running a league in this area of fantasy called the pink tables running a league and they reached out and to, uh, had positive things to say so i'm going to try to do a little more just because i do enjoy doing these kind of videos and the positive feedback is encouraging and appreciated so please keep hitting that subscribe button and the like button as well as check out the twitter page um, that's fantasy underscore seria as well as the instagram page where i post this as well as my weekly premier league uh, results but just that um, as far as the Premier League goes. And that is uh, Seria Fantasy Tips. Uh, they're at Seria Fantasy Tips and you can find all sorts of stuff there. But this is gonna be a game week one review video. So instead of just doing one every week, um, as I said, I was originally gonna do and uh, as I did with the Canadian Premier League stuff, I'm gonna try to do a preview where I show what my team's coming into review as how it went and things that I'm thinking about doing. Okay, so let's get off and wasn't a great start to the season. It actually like started encouraging like on the first day and then uh, it went downhill from there. And especially with that uh, logo you see in the background that not only did the team, uh, do poorly, but also the players that I have in my team did not get the result that I wanted from them. Um, so that was very disappointing. And yeah, as far as someone that you're supposed to be watching for advice, probably didn't make the very the greatest first impression week one. But let's kind of go over how things happened. Um, as far as keeping went, I am very glad that with both my keepers, not necessarily with how many points they got me, but as few called. Twitter page, as you would have seen, I have two starting keepers valued at 8.5 uh, million combined. That's not each, that's combined. So Kragno is a 4.5 uh, goalkeeper. Zoet is a 4 million goalkeeper. I, I figured out eventually the official currency is Phantom million or something. I'm just going to go with million for future. Um, but yeah, so and honestly, most goalies, regardless of what team, like, yeah, there's the better teams probably have a more likelihood of clean sheets, but all it takes is one goal to drop that um, points total from like a six, seven, eight area to a one or a two. And then two goals and it gets worse from there. Unless you're making penalty saves or uh, you're getting a lot of shots. And the weaker teams are likely to get a lot of shots against them. So that's why I go with, keepers from the weaker teams because it allows you to spend more money into your field as well as you can get those save points that a team like uh inter or milan uh two separate ones by the way inter or milan um or juventus like normally those teams aren't getting a lot of shots fired at them so if team gets a counter attack scores a goal on one or two shots even if juve or inter uh, go on to win that game, your keeper is still only getting probably two points because they're not making many saves against the weaker teams. Um, so that's my reasoning for that. And I am happy that I do have a 4 million uh, uh, starting goalkeeper in Zoet. It, that game started off really bad because Spezia went up 2 nothing, And I thought, oh my gosh, Spezia is going to get the clean sheet and Kragno is going to get two goals against. Um, Cagliari did come back with two goals to tie the game and for some reason I thought so it was the one that caused the penalty which I thought was minus points in this league um but anyway difference of one point there obviously every point is good so probably would have been better to have Zoe in but uh the final result of that game which we can see here um doesn't really change too much so I don't feel as bad about it anymore moving up the defense was actually pretty good um Day one, so Inter got a 4 0 clean. I believe it was 4 0. Yeah, 4 0 clean sheet against Genoa. And so uh, Bastoni gets uh, the clean sheet points there. Uh, Kerr got a clean sheet as well. Um, they finished, they were the last game yesterday against Sampdoria. 
so I got five points there. I'm wondering if you got a yellow card. Uh, I think I was half watching that game. I had it on, but I don't know. You can see the breakdown of points if you click on the little icon there. Yeah, so you got a yellow card there, which is why he didn't have as many points as Bastoni. Mario really had a really good return um with nine points and if you have played the fantasy premier league game you'll notice there's a bonus point system and there is an algorithm that goes along with it but basically if you see your player doing pretty well he's likely going to be in the bonus and uh if there's a clean sheet you'll probably see a defender a keeper there uh as far as forwards and midfielders go you're normally relying on them getting uh an assist or goal at some point in order for them to find themselves on the bonus point system but that system you can either get three two or one points uh and it's awarded to three players in total in the game unless there's ties for that uh single point and lastly uh mela who uh torino did get a goal against them in the uh, Atalanta and Torino game, but uh, Mela, uh, he seemed out of all of those defenders to be playing the highest up. So I'm not by any means giving up on him yet. Um, originally, the plan was probably to try to demote one of these defenders to a defender probably on the same team, but a cheaper price to move the funds up. But honestly, all of these teams have pretty good run of fixtures right now. Um, I kind of set up my own if again if you do the premier league there's something called the fdr and it kind of shows all of their fixtures coming up um and it has like strength to a uh, weakness of teams that they're facing and i kind of set up one myself on an excel sheet if you want to reach out to me potentially um i can try to send that to you as well but it just i have the whole schedule there and i kind of made my own personal rankings of what the strength of each team is and then that helps me see okay what players should i bring in at one time at what times because i do try to play the fixtures uh even more so than just the form of the player i'd rather a player from the swallow facing venezia than a player from inter facing ac milan at the end of the day because there's just a better chance that that player from Sassuolo is going to score against a weaker team as far as I'm concerned than a player from a top team scoring against another top team because those games can go either way and there can be a clean sheet either way I'm not saying the other game there can't be an upset of course there is as we know Juve didn't win this week when they for sure we're probably the favorites there but just to see where my thinking's at all right moving up into the midfield and I'm actually going to kind of go over this by game, not necessarily by player, but the Inter players did very well. Four nothing win. It would be kind of uh, crappy if your players didn't get any returns and you had Inter players and in that. But luckily, I did get a Barella assist, which was nice. I was hoping for a little more out of that, but Jacko did come through and get a thirteen point hole with a goal and an assist. So that was really good from Jacko to see. Uh, my only regret is not putting the captain on him and instead only the vice captain because watching the Juve game and seeing both Ronaldo and Chiesa not start was bad. But then I was hopeful that neither of them would get put in because at that point, Jekyll would take the captaincy role and double that 13 points. And then, uh, but that didn't happen. I'm quickly realizing the difference between Premier League and Serie A as far as substitutions is with those extra two substitutions if you have a player in your team that's probably a name higher name player and even if they don't start you can probably guarantee they're going to get into that game if they're a midfielder or a striker sometimes they don't sub defense but if you have a midfielder or a striker with five substitutions that player is likely getting in and so you're probably not finding that many points off the bench in Serie A fantasy as far as i'm concerned so my hope was maybe Ronaldo and Chiesa don't play. I get double Jacko points and I'll get Palisic coming in because I guess I wasn't, I almost forgot I was going to touch on him, but he got an assist and I was upset about that because he's on my bench. I will not be receiving those points. And I was like debating, oh, do I start him or should I take, or should I only play three at the back or something like that? I'm again, made the wrong decision there. Palisic gets the assist and that's five points I'm not seeing. But going back to the Juve game, so Chiesa and Ronaldo don't start. And about 60 minutes in, around there, I don't think they got put in the same time, but they got put in around the same time. They both get subbed in. So there goes my double Jekyll points right off the bat. So that was a little annoying. And not only that, 
but Juve gets scored on twice. They were up 2 nothing, by the way. Um, and so they got scored on twice. It's, it's a tie in the 96th minute, if you didn't watch the game. Chiesa sends a wonderful ball over to Ronaldo, who heads it in the back of the net. And so as a Juve fan, as a, I'm excited. As a Ronaldo and a Chiesa owner, I'm excited. And Ronaldo runs the corner flag, takes off his shirt. Stupidest yellow you can get, especially at the start of the season where yellow accumulation can cause a suspension. But gets a yellow card, and then VAR comes in and rolls out the goal. So not only am I not happy as a Juventus fan, not only am I not happy that Ronaldo gets a minus one for the yellow, is my captain, and now the goal is taken away. So he doesn't get the goal points. That yellow card stands. And what double, triple, quadruple of zero? Well, zero points for the captain. And that's a hard pill to swallow, and that's why my week was so lackluster. And, of course, Keizo didn't get a yellow, but he just gets the one point for subbing in, whereas it would have been nice to have Pasolich come in and add on those other four points that could have been on top of that. Um, so yeah, that was my big frustrate. That's when I knew this week was going downhill once that Juventus game hit. And yeah, so the rest of the week didn't end up too great from there. I had Craig No and my Milan players yesterday. Again, Craig No didn't do great, but I'm not relying on huge points for my goalie at the end of the day. Uh, Kara got the clean sheets. So that was fine. Um, Giroud, I think, put one in the back of the net, but again, rolled out due to offside. And Rebic didn't start, which also hurt. Okay, so that's how my points ended up. Uh, Roma has really good fixtures coming up. I'm trying to see if I can fit Karsdorp into my squad at all. I'm not sure it's going to happen. Uh, he might get first bench position because he did play. And so I do think that uh, I'm going to either be investing in more Roma players or getting Karsdorp in. We'll see. Um, and yeah, that's how the points went on my team. That has me sitting over 5,000 spots out and I think there's uh, 8,000. So I actually think I'm in the bottom half of the table right now, um, but it's okay. There's, if like things are really wish-washy between like he's and Ronaldo, they should be starters. Yeah, like I'm still gonna be pretty upset if they're not starting this week. But by three weeks, I think it has to do with the Euro. There's a lot of speculation over Ronaldo being transferred out. So that could be why as well. Uh, I don't see why Keza doesn't start next game because I know he played deep into the Euro, but like that just means you're more in form. I don't, I guess they want to give them some kind of rest, maybe see families. I don't know. Uh, but I mean, he's at the game, so it's not like that's happening. Anyway, a little bit of a frustration that I'm taking out of this game. Um, I'm not going to go to my next week's squad yet because that's just going to be for a different video. Um, as far as future transfers, I'm thinking of taking out Rebic. I think he's more of a fringe player. And if you're a Milan fan, feel free to reach out and let me know if that's just a one game thing or uh, and, or if I can see him. Because I just remember his name being all over the score sheet last year, um, which is why I took him in. And then if Ibra comes back, Giroud will have to be a move at some point as well. Um, but there were a lot of other strikes that did well. I'm really glad I didn't take the chance on Oshiman, who got a really early red card for Napoli, which actually that was another thing. So like I said, play the fixtures. One that I'm very much looking at is Napoli fixtures right now. Or sorry, not Napoli fixtures, teams that are facing Venezia, which was Napoli this past week. Because Napoli with 10 men was able to still go and score both goals with 10 men and take out Venezia. So imagine Venezia playing teams for a full 90 minutes. So that's a team that I'm looking at to try to target when I'm picking players. Um, something important to note, if you're a Premier League uh, fantasy uh, player, is you're used to uh, normally a starting uh, attack or starting strategy is to bank a transfer in that first week. So you have two free ones going into next week. Remember, uh, after free transfers, each transfer costs four points. So one thing to remember is um, that you uh, that in, in this Serie A fantasy, there is no banking transfers. You either use your one free transfer or you lose it. So that's important. Read the rules again and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I read that correctly. 
So, and I don't like wasting transfers, so I don't really just want to sit on it, especially when I don't like that Rebic didn't start and then came in and I think he had one chance. But I think I'm going to try to switch him out for a uh, Roma player. If I just quickly look at my uh, FDR. So yeah, Roma's got Seller Natana, Sassuolo might be a little harder. Hellas and Udinese in there as well. So they're not facing many top caliber teams. They will have Lazio after that. That'll be tough for a big derby game. Then back to Empoli. And then that's when I start looking to get rid of Roma players because within the next four games after that, you got Juve, Napoli, and AC Milan. Um, but Roma players are looking really good right now. Um, I What I'm actually thinking of doing to replace Rebic is finding a lower um, cost player on probably a weaker team that has uh, potential for decent fixtures um, in case I need someone to come off the bench. But with bench players not being used very much, I'm wondering if the strategy is to have a really light bench and have like all your money pumped into your field uh, because they're probably going to end up on the field at some point. If they get injured, you sub them out. So that might be something to use um, when you use your first shuffle, which I think they're calling the shuffle the wild card from Premier League. So if you're familiar with that, it's called a shuffle now. Um, there's also one player, I think it was on Empoli. Let me just go to the transfers area. Or no, it's on Verona. 6.5 million. So it would still, for Rebic, I'd be gaining 0.5 million. You got two goals last game for Verona. If I go to Verona's fixtures. One second. Uh, Verona's or Hellas Verona's fixtures. So I don't necessarily need them for this week. So I can put Pasolic in for that uh, third spot. But after that, they got Bologna. They face Roma, which is hard. Then you got Salernitana, Genoa, and Spezia. So those are three games where goals can be found. And people might argue like those teams are no better than Verona or something. That's true. But again, this isn't a player that I necessarily need to play every week. Um, and what I might be thinking is if Dybala is consistently playing in that striker role, which he had a fantastic game at, um, I might look to replace Chiesa with Dybala, especially uh, the way things are going um, with Chiesa currently. Because how much Dybala is, yeah, he's listed as a midfielder, not a striker. So that's definitely a player that I'd want in the midfield role. Um, if he continues to play, we know that Dybala has not seemed to be a fan favorite of many managers that have come through Juve, including Allegri when he was first there. He's in, he was a sub a lot. So we'll see if he continues to start. And if so, I think uh, getting Dybala in my squad, not just as a Juve fan, I try not to be biased when I'm talking about fantasy tips in general. Um, but yeah, to you, if you can have a striker in your midfielder in your midfield, that's always ideal at the end of the day. Um, okay, but I think that's where I'm going to kind of leave it for this. I'm in a couple leagues, one with like my dad and stuff. So that's why you see four. So this is the main one. Um, I mean, 5,205. So that's not ideal at all. I'm hoping to climb these ranks coming next week. Um, the Forged in Fire League, which is my league. Feel free to join it if you uh, need to post it again on uh, maybe on Twitter or something. I can do that. Feel free to still join. We have some big scores. Um, actually, why does it say one here, but then someone's ahead? That's confusing to me. But uh, for Sleeman triple seven, uh, awesome job with a score of 85. In case that person's not in my league, and really it's this person. Also, 72 is a great score for Khalil. Um, so thanks all for joining my league. Uh, I'm sitting 10th in it, potentially 11th, depending on what's going on here. Um, but I hope to be climbing that as well as the other league that I'm in is TPT. So the pink table uh, one, if you can get into theirs, they're giving away a 10 or a hundred dollar Amazon card. I think so there's a prize for that. Um, so join theirs too. They seem like a good bunch of people over there and they have a YouTube channel as well. Um, okay. Anyway, I hope this was better last that first video I was on vacation. So I had to be a little quieter because there are other people um, and the host with me, but I was, I felt like I was able to more express 
uh, my love for doing these videos, her fantasy a little better today. I'll be posting the results on the Instagram page. Remember to uh, like and subscribe as well as follow the Twitter and Instagram account. Remember, Twitter is fantasy underscore Syria and Instagram is fantasy Syria tips. I'm sorry, they're different. I wanted to keep it consistent, but based on character usage and taken names, they have to be a little different. Um, anyway, take care. Hope you enjoyed and leave your comments below if you agree or disagree or want to add anything to the conversation. See ya.